Morning everybody and thank you for joining me again on an absolutely wonderful day and it's turning quite warm as well. Now the field that I'm in today I've never been in before the reason being it's usually like a bog <laughs> which is why they don't grow crops in it they just let it go to seed and maybe two or three times a year when the farmer can get on the field without sinking he cuts the grass. Anyway the grass has been cut maybe a couple of weeks ago so I've taken the long walk down here just to check it out <laughs> and guess what sods low it's as dry as a bone and it's like concrete so I'll be sticking to the bottom side of the field where hopefully there's a bit more moisture as I said I've never been in it before I don't know what to expect so we'll just have to keep his fingers crossed and hope for the best now before you go away, as you know, I don't do many giveaways because I'm not into that kind of thing. But Graham from Unearthed UK Limited has sent me another couple of those nice coin identification boards. Now Graham said that I could keep one for myself, which I'm going to because I like them. But at the end of the video, I'm going to be giving one away as a bit of a prize type thing. So stick around to the end of the video because you never know you might win one. Right, <laughs> let battle commence. <laughs> Right then my good friends, looks as though we've got the first coin of the day down there, about 7 inches deep, came up at 68 on the ID scale. I don't think there's much left of it, probably a half penny, maybe Victorian. Wasp buzzing round my head. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's a nice find all the same. So we'll pop it in the box and we'll crack on. And I'll just quickly show you this boys and girls. Bit of a scratchy signal, don't know why. Came up at about 65 on the ID scale. Looks like what's left of a silver plated livery button. If I can get it out. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's what it is. Still got the shank on the back. Might be able to get a design off it, I don't know. But we'll pop it in the boxy thing and we'll get a bit further. Right, my good friends, we've got another interesting artifact down here. About, oh, probably about nine inches deep. Came up at 82, 83 on the ID scale. It's made of lead. I thought it was a trade weight at first, but I don't think it is. Uh, <laughs> in fact, I don't know what it is. Uh, obviously circular. It's got some kind of pattern on it. Possibly a lid of some description. I don't really know. Anyway, there it is, my friends. As I said, I don't know what it is. But it's interesting, and I do like lead artefacts. Right, we'll pop it in the bag, and I think we'll head off in that direction, over there. Right, my good friends, oh, I'll just move this beetle. <laughs> Go on out, you bugger. <laughs> uh, right, we've got a target down here, about eight inches deep, something like that. Uh, came up at 72, 73 on the ID scale, and it's just here. It looks as though it could be another part of maybe a brooch, something like that. Obviously it's broken off just there, looks as though it should have been oval in shape. Looks as though there's something missing just there. And there's some kind of fastening on the back just there. Uh, not entirely sure, but it's another interesting find all the same. So there we are, my friends. Brooch, pendant, whatever. Right, let's pop it in the boxy thing and we'll get a bit further. 
I don't mind telling you, this is hard work. It's so dry and so hard, it's unbelievable. Uh, but, you know me, I will persevere. And we've got another coin. It's about, about six inches deep. Came up at 71 on the ID scale, bit scratchy, but that's probably due to the dry conditions. Uh, nothing to shout about. Looks as though it's probably Victoria. Anyway, don't care because it's another nice little find. All right, I'll let you have a look. <sighs> there you are, my friends. Hope you can see that. <laughs> Should have turned the screen round. But there you go. It's another nice little coin. Right, we'll pop it away and get a bit further. Now then, my good friends, while I'm having a break, I just want to answer a question that somebody asked me a while ago. And the question was, what's this dangly thing on my belt? Well, as you know, I use the big coil on the Technetics quite a lot. It's a very, very substantial coil. The fins are very, very strong. And trust me, it's not going to break. I've seen some other coils and they do look a little bit flimsy, but this one isn't. And as a consequence of that, it can get quite heavy, especially when you're swinging it for six hours at a time. So, the dangly thing is a harness that I made myself. It's a lightweight aluminium carabiner on some webbing with a clip on it just there. I made a bracket that goes on the up part of the Technetics handle with a bracket just there and all I do is simply clip that onto that and the job's a good one. So <laughs> to answer your question my friend that is what the little dangly thing is. It's a harness that I made myself goes on this very substantial military belt and it does the job marvellously. Okie dokie. Right, let's get a bit further. Well, as you can see, the grass is quite long, but it's only that thin, wispy stuff. And because I've got the big coil on the Technetics, it flattens it quite nicely. Anyway, we've got another coin down here. Once again, it's nothing to shout about. Uh, only about four inches deep, something like that. Looks like a penny. Looks as though it might be King George. But not to worry, it's another coin. Lovely little find. Right, into the boxy thing. And we'll plod on. Well, it's been hard work, but I did say that I would persevere. <laughs> and now it's paid off, because we've got ourselves a nice little silver coin. Only about four, maybe five inches deep came up at 78 on the ID scale and it looks I haven't, I haven't got my glasses on but it is I, I can see it's a Victorian sixpence and it does look in quite good condition as well apart from it being tarnished <laughs> just goes to show perseverance does pay off. Anyway, I'll let you have a look. <laughs> oh. There we are, my friends. Uh, you can just see Victoria's head just there. Don't know if you can see that. But that's what it is. A lovely little Queen Victoria sixpence and I am as happy as Larry. Right, I'm going for some lunch now. Catch you in a bit. <clears throat> right, my good friends. Well, I'm only about two metres away from where I found that Victorian sixpence. Uh, <laughs> and I thought I'd found something else that might be decent. Uh, and it's a t little pocket spill. But unfortunately, 
Uh, they both look like decimal coins. Uh, they've got that lovely orange colour to them. I'm not quite sure what it is yet, but it looks modern to me. And this was in the same hole, once again looking quite orange. So, I don't know. I'll clean them up later and see what they are. Right, best foot forward. Right boys and girls, we've got a target down here. Uh, it's about eight, maybe nine inches deep. Now, I could be clutching at straws. Now, I don't know whether you can see it or not, but it, it's just there. You can just see the edge of it. And, as I said, I could be clutching at straws, but to me, it looks like silver. But I don't know what it is. And I don't... Well, it might already be broken, I don't know. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the camera off and spend some time <laughs> digging it out just to find out what it is. Okie dokie. Right, I'll catch you in a few minutes. <laughs> well, my good friends, I eventually got it out and it turns out it's a spoon. But, on a more positive note, it's solid silver. You can quite plainly see the hole marks on it. So, so not such a bad little find after all. I'm quite happy with that. A solid silver teaspoon. Right, we'll pop it in the bag and we'll crack on. Right, my good friends, that's me done for the day. Now, I'm almost certain that there is a lot more stuff to be found in this field. We just need some rain to improve the quality of the signals. Because, to be honest, most of them were very scratchy and a bit iffy. But, there you go. At least we found some decent bits and pieces. So, I'll see you all at home for the roundup once I've cleaned everything up and we'll have a look at exactly what we found today. Okie dokie, I'll catch you all later. Hello my friends and welcome back. Now before we take a closer look at the finds, I want to say thank you once again to Graham Rushton from Unearthed UK Limited for sending me two of these coin identification boards. Now, as I said earlier, I am keeping one myself because I do like them, but the other one I am going to give away as a prize. So if you want to be in with a chance of winning it, all you've got to do is comment on this video, be a public subscriber, and that's it. Doesn't matter where in the world you are, if you win it, I will send you it. Okie dokie. Now, as you've probably gathered, I am quite closely affiliated to Unearthed UK Limited, mainly because I like Graham. He's a, he's a nice bloke and he's honest. And if you need anything that's metal detecting related, please pop over and have a look at his website. That's Unearthed UK Limited. Okay, so that's that. Now, the other thing is, in the last video, you probably saw me read out a letter from a chap called Bill, who is from Somerset Searchers. Now, before Bill started metal detecting, he was seriously into astrophotography. But he packed it up because the weather in this country is rubbish. <laughs> That's basically why. But Bill sent me a couple of photographs that he took with the very expensive, serious equipment he used to have. And I was, I was very impressed, to be honest. And as a result, I downloaded a, a couple of the photographs and I had them enlarged and framed. And this is one of them that I had done. I can't remember what they call it. He did tell me. I thought I'd written it down just here. But I haven't. But anyway, that is one of the pictures that Bill took with his seriously expensive equipment. And I'm sure you'll agree, it's very good. So anyway, thanks for that, Bill. I appreciate it, mate. And I hope there's no copyright on that, because you're not getting out. <laughs> Right, let's have a look at the finds. Right then, first of all, these are all the unwanted finds that I dug up. I mean, some of them are halfway decent, I suppose, really. There's a small lead gaming piece, an old bag seal, and 
just a lot of other bits of scrap lead etc that and that there are the decimal coins that I dug up that there is a George the sixth coin that I dug up those two are half pennies Victorian I haven't waxed any of those or put pictures in the videos because it's just they're just not worth putting in basically um, that is the only Victorian copper that's in decent condition that I dug up uh, I think the date on that is 1899 which if I remember right is about two years before Victoria died um, that is what I think is left of a brooch or some kind of pendant there's nothing left on it no detail whatsoever so I haven't waxed that either that is the livery button that I dug up I did some research on it uh, and as you saw in the video I did manage to find out who the uh, owner of the crest was I believe if I remember correctly it was a Mrs Scott Mar Marshall uh, I can't find out exactly who she was there's no information on that at all but that's what that was that button there it's a pity it's not in better condition because it's got crossed arrows on it but I can't find any information on that either that there is the little leaf pendant or brooch that I found probably Victorian it's a nice find this item just here is the lead whatever it is there's nothing on the other side I really don't know what it is but there's obviously concentric circles on it some little lines going outwards just there but what it was or what it was used for I really don't know that <laughs> I thought might have been a piece of jewellery obviously it wasn't it was a spoon but I'm not complaining because it's solid silver I managed to straighten it out using a miniature blowtorch just applying heat to it I managed to straighten the bowl I used another spoon as a template and gently tapped it back into shape a bit like panel beating I suppose but it, it turned out quite well um, obviously those are the hallmarks on the back which you will have seen in the photograph in the video the interesting thing about the hallmarks is that mark just there because that is the mark of the reigning monarch which was George III and the reason that they started stamping the monarch's head on silver in that period was to prove that you'd actually paid the tax and the duty on the silver and if it hadn't got that mark on it you would have been in big trouble I also noticed when I cleaned it up that it's got the name of the family on the other side which is WB and I'm almost fairly sure that that would have been William Bagshaw who were the big land landowners in the area um, I suspect that because I found that spoon and that livery button that they were having a shoot in that area on, at the edge of the woods and they would have taken all their fine pots and pans and silverware with them so they probably lost that spoon and one of the footmen lost that livery button well that's what I reckon anyway <laughs> and obviously the nicest coin of the day was the Victorian sixpence which is a lovely little coin as you can see and the date on that is 1898 so a lovely little find which was an end to a good day and yes you can hear George in the background <laughs> Right, those are the finds, my friends, so just give me a second. Right, my good friends, those were the finds. Not a bad day, not a bad day at all. Anyway, just leaves me to say thank you very much for joining me. I do appreciate it. Don't forget to be a subscriber, or don't forget to subscribe, and comment on the video if you want to win that coin identification board. 
and I'd just like to say thank you very much to all my subscribers and viewers, new and old. I do appreciate it. And I'll catch you all the next time round, my friends. Bye for now. Thank you.